Hey everybody. Today we have an Optima to look at. Uh, this was another eBay score. I was uh, up late one night and trolling the uh, parts or repair listings and I found a couple that were worth bidding on and uh, they've been showing up. I kind of have a price rule where the uh, amount of parts inside have to be worth uh, at least double what I'm paying for it or it's just not worth buying. I don't need dead projectors laying around and just throwing money away. As fun as that would be, I can't quite afford to do that. But anyway, I uh, picked this up from a real nice guy. It actually was shipped from Canada. Um, as many of you may know, I am not in Canada. And I packed it very well. Looks like either the original box or the box that he got his replacement in. Because I believe it's an HD26. That's what the listing was. But the box here says HD27. Now, I forget what the difference between the two are. It's probably something silly. But let's see. If it's an HD27, that's still good. You know, they're both... I, I'm hoping for an HD26 because of the problem. But HD27 would be interesting. So let's see. Nice foam on top like that remote wow he never even used the original batteries that's crazy let's see get that more packing out sure looks like an hd26 you guys just see my hd26 around here is an osram is that the new one he said he tried to put a new lamp in and then the power supply blew out which is frustrating, and that would make me pretty upset. So we'll see. Here is... Oh. That must be what he put in. Oof. Don't buy cheap lamps. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that wire. That's not me doing that. Look at those. Those are shredded. What a piece of junk. And then inside, you see that? That wire looks like it's, uh, here, get some light on it. Look at the tip. And that wire's just wrapped around it. A piece of junk. We'll check this. We'll see if this is shorted. But this is what was put in this. Uh, I'm pretty sure this housing. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Anytime I see that sticker, I know this comes from, well, I don't know if you, I think that says MIT. This is from MIT Tech. Mm, no comment. No comment. Good lens, though. So it's like the housing might be fine, but that fellow's not fine. Let's look at the other one while we're here. Pretty sure this is the original. I don't even see any. I don't look that beat up. Looks pretty good, honestly. I'd expect to see like white crud down in the bottom there, and I don't. I don't see any cracks either. Feels pretty good. This might go back in. PVIP 221.0 E20.8. This is going to be its own thing. I'm going to, I have a lamp that I'm going to use in here. So we'll put that stuff off to the side. His listing did say, uh, as I'm repeating, that the uh, problem happened after he put the replacement lamp in. He said he lost power and then he put a fuse in. Huh, no power cord. That's okay. I got plenty of power cords. Projector, lamp, manual. I wonder if this came with the uh, new one. Anything on here of any useful info? Nope, just a bunch of nonsense. Alright. In fact, I'm just going to throw that in the trash. Nothing loose. That's good. Side looks good. 
smell test, no smoke. It's so weird. I started doing all this stuff back when smoking was still pretty commonplace. In fact, the first shop I worked in, people would just smoke in there normally. And I got used to the smell and cleaning of nicotine off of things, but uh, you don't see that so much anymore, which is uh, a good thing. So let's see what's in there now. I'm assuming this is the old one. All right, that's loose. Pop that out. Yeah, that's good. It's got a good lens. Yep. That, that's also a knockoff. Let's see what the wire looks like. More cruddy crimping. I wonder if they're like reusing old crimps or something. At least that's not a... This is the original housing. It looks like that probably had the Osram in there because that's not an Osram. It's some, you know, Guangzhou special. And I should be clear, not all projector lamps out of China are bad. Uh, in fact, the majority of lamps that you purchase these days come out of China. Uh, Philips, Osram, Ushio, all of them are assembled in China. The uh, A lot of times the burners, the arc tube, that part in the center. This part is made in Belgium or Germany or Japan or something. And then they're all shipped to China where this part and this part and all that are finally put together. So you're not going to see them made anywhere else. You know, back... Uh, Geez, pre-2012, you'd see made in Belgium, you know, made in the Netherlands, that sort of thing. Made in Japan. Uh, but you won't see that anymore. If, in fact, if you see that, you can rest assured that's either a really, really old lamp or that it's um, a retube where they take like a used one and then they put it, uh, replace the burner with uh, something else. But so far, all I'm seeing is a bunch of cruddy lamps which hopefully will take us to the solution. First thing I'm going to do is get the, uh, the cheap fluke, and let's just see if any of these are shorted. Let's see. Now we should have zero ohms. Wow. I'm getting meg. Hmm. That really should just be open. See, like here's a here's a real Osram getting nothing. That's what I should get. Let's check this other this other fake one. Yeah, but buy real lamps, folks. That's weird. Seven meg. I mean, it's very high resistance. But an arc lamp is open. There's no filament. There should be no electrical connection across. Take the wires off in case it was something with the connector. Oh, see? 6.7? That's weird. Alright, so it's not shorted to the casing. But look, if I go across, it's like it's building up capacitance. I mean, I, technically, I guess it's an air capacitor, but it shouldn't be. This looks like a good Osram. I'm pretty sure it is. I'll probably go and test it on my little test box to be sure. But if I go to the contacts on that, again, that's, look, nothing. Let me switch the uh, probes shouldn't matter but just to show you that it's being tested every possible yet yeah, nothing so these I just I see more reasons not to buy these because it should not be measuring any sort of resistance Let's set them off to the side and uh, I'm gonna go test this real quick I'll be right back okay so I tested this one on my test box and it lit up beautifully so no problems there I am not going to plug in either of these 
I don't trust them. Um, they're going to get new. At least one of them is going to get this bulb reinstalled. But for now, we are going to use this one, which I know is good. It's out of my other H326, so I know it's working. But before we even do that, I want to make sure the whole thing comes on. So we're going to bypass the door switch and we're going to power it up without the uh, uh, without a lamp in it. I want to see the color wheel spin and all that fun stuff. Because he did say there was a power supply problem and I just want to confirm that before we go further. So, come on. Nope. Here's that little one I was using. It had a little gator clip. Unless I go this way. Maybe I can go this way. Nah. Let me find something to hold that in. Okay. So you guys can't really see it from that angle, but I, uh, <coughs> pardon me, I bent a little paper clip to hold that little switch down there. I should be able to take it out. Yep. So it goes down. Let's see. It goes down. Then I turn it, and then that holds it in place. So let's turn it this way. Shine a light. And I do see the color wheel. Hmm. I get a Q-tip. I'm pushing that color wheel. It kind of feels like it's dragging. Right, let me get that light on there again. Make sure you guys can see that. Yeah, that spins fun. Okay, so power cord. Okay, we have a standby LED, there you go. All right, color wheel spun up. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I hear the power supply ticking away, I'm trying to ignite something. Here's something tick, 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 ticking away in there. But I have this, which I think should go right there if we need it. So. I don't hear the ticking now. Come on, give me the lamp air. Hmm, it's kind of acting like it thinks the lamp is on. Well, here, let's do this. Now that I know no smoke or fire is coming out, let's uh, let's put this fellow in. See what happens. Snug that screw down, plug in the connector, drop that down, we got that clip in. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Watch it get light. No. No lamp ignition. That's okay.
I think I may have unplugged it too early. I thought I heard a little thing at the beginning. And now I'm just listening. Let's, uh, we can leave that in. Let me take this out. Let's open the bottom up. Or open the top up, take the screws out of the bottom. Let's see. VDH DNL. Optima Europe. I guess that's why they sh they shipped to Canada. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And then, oh, where's my flathead? Let's pop those clips. Let's see. There's one here. Here, inside, there's one here too, yep. Yeah, that power supply looks to be the same. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's do that then. I think that's what we'll do first. Put the uh, just, well, we'll look at the old supply. I, I'd like to fix them. Of course, I could just swap it out and then fix it up my leisure. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's see. Ground wire. Screw that. And then there's, let's see, little screws here. Of course, I don't have my good Wea driver. I accidentally put it in my back pocket and took it home. It's sitting on my dresser with a pile of pens. Keep forgetting to uh, throw it back in my pocket. But it looks like there's five, five of these screws. Four, one, two, three, four, and then the ground screw. Yep. Is there one more I don't see? Let's see. That's nice. There we go. It was just sticky. And then I have to unplug the ballast control and then the lamp itself. There we go. That's the screw that fell off the screwdriver. These look identical. ZN3030846, ZN3070954. That must not mean anything. Oh, here we are. 78.8VHO4G. Yep, 210 watt. All right, that's good. I do wonder, I wonder what happened to this one. I mean, we're going to check it, but. Q 
curious. I like his fuse job. Not too bad. Not too bad. Let's uh, let's look over the uh, repair. I definitely believe that the uh, lamps caused it. They should not draw Meg. There shouldn't be any resistance. It should be just open all the time. So there's some reason those are have some kind of resistance, which is a problem. Honestly, not too bad. He, uh, he got it right on top. Not bad. Let me get that out of the way. You can see it better. Not too bad. Don't see anything else obvious. I didn't hear the tick, 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 so... Makes me think the uh, PFC is not working. That may be any of those. If this was shorted. Doesn't look melted though. Let's check the FETs. We'll do those first. It's these guys right here. Shorted. Short. Short. And I think that's the ignition side. I think this is the run side. Or no, that's the ignition side. It goes through the capacitors. That's kind of what we're looking for. So it looks like we definitely have one bed there. Let's check the PFC. Yeah, that's all right. Hmm. Let's check that one a little deeper. 8.2 meg. Yeah, that looks good. Let's check that big diode. Yep, that's all right. So it looks like we have one, one bad transistor. That one. That one. Let's see, that goes. That goes to that capacitor but I'm pretty sure this is the start circuit but either way that's no good and let's see those are 19 n20s I might have some of those let me go look real quick okay so I don't have any 19 n20s but I do have some 57 n20s uh, the difference between the two, a 19 and 20, is a 19 amp average power handling at 200 volts. So the first number is the uh, average continuous current. These will do up to 57 amps. Um, the data sheet actually says 33 amps continuous. But either way, they run at 200 volts and they'll handle more power than those. So... I'm going to switch out the pair. You always want to do it in complements so that they're as even as possible. And these were from the same batch and matched when I bought them. So let me go switch those out. I'll be right back. Okay, I have replaced those four FETs or those two FETs. Those guys right there. Oh, I wanted to... Well... I'm going to leave the fuse as it sits. I, if this works, I will clean up the fuse a little bit and get it through. But it obviously works. So Let's put it back. Actually, no. I have a, uh, a way of testing. Let's get this guy. Because so what I can do... 
can just plug it in on this foam here and then we can see what happens. Oh, that's one way to do it. Not the way I would do it. We'll fix that. <laughs> I don't know why you cut those. Could have just unplugged it. But that's okay. We'll uh shrink tube and splice that. In fact, let me go get my shrink tubing so I'm ready to do that once I see this work. I just noticed something. <laughs> What's all that? Oof. An unhappy Dremel. Man. Oof. Mm. Maybe I'll check with Optima about getting a new one of these because that might be. Oof. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, let me plug this back in. I just I needed the keyboard to work the power menu. I, mean, I guess I could use the remote, but let's do that. Why is that not clicking? Is that damage too? Make sure that's in. Clip. Clip it up. And let's just set it down. There we are. And you know what? I'm going to use this where I have the uh, screw tied down, or the uh, switch tied down. Because I don't want to have to rig anything inside there without having a cover in place. This is fine. Yeah, make a little bit of space. see what happens. Let me go stand by the main switch in case smoke comes out. Nope. Just light. <laughs> I like that. You guys see Optima? It's a little out of focus, but let's see. Menu. Yep. All right. That's enough for me to put that power supply back in. So it looks like all of the, uh, all of the problem it was too it was a bad you know a subpar quality lamp lamp housing lamp and housing and uh, you guys can't see it and there's two bad MOSFETs plus the fuse but we're gonna clean all of that up or I'm gonna go clean all that up and you guys are gonna watch and we'll put it back in and then we'll uh, we'll watch a picture. Let me get that. Let me get that solder glob off. That's not supposed to be there. Looks like that's stuck to it. Probably when he was fixing the uh, fuse. Yep. Not bad though. All right, I'm gonna go fix that fuse, and then we'll reassemble. And in fact, while the uh, soldering iron is heating up, let's. Let's do this. Let's take crappy lamp and uh, switch it out for not so crappy Osram. And Osram doesn't really light the world on fire for me. I said it before, they're kind of like the Chevy of the lamp industry. Sure, they work, but you'll probably you know, not have working air conditioning. It'll start every time, but you won't have working air conditioning and the power window buttons will break and, you know, all that CD player. Anybody who remembers CD players will skip. You know. Seems funny when I think about it in my head. 
I see nothing wrong with this lamp. I don't know why it was changed. It looks beautiful inside, nice and shiny. Get rid of that old wire and oh pardon me. Is there no I want to make sure there wasn't little clips that I needed to get to. Let's feed that through. Feed that through. Wait, where's let me take this one out. Make sure I get the wires in the right order. It kind of doesn't matter, being that they're AC, but I want them to be the same. So let's see, we have large tab on the right. So large tab to there, small tab to there. So that means this way, I have these backwards. Let's see, that's gonna go, let's see, that's gonna go like this. So, large tab to here. Now these are AC, but there's kind of like a, I don't know, hot and neutral sort of thing, like an in and an out put very simply. There we are. I like that. And we'll get the outer part of the housing. And I'm using what I think is the original housing. I hope that's the original housing. I don't want to use that other one with the uh, with the white sticker on it. Every time I see one of these, you know, it has that HB number, and like, I guess that's MIT, MGT, and it has a, a fake lamp inside, it's a problem. I've never had one of those work out. I don't know how the company who sells them gets away with it, because they, they got to have a 40, 50, 60, 70 percent return rate or something. This one. Okay. So this is the lamp we're going to run. That's good. Let me get this foam out of the way. I'm going to have to fix that fan next. I'm going to have to redo those fan wires. I wonder, I wonder why that was cut. My, my guess is he wasn't sure how to uh, get to things. He was probably worried about like this unplugging properly, so he just cut them. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Let's, yeah, get this stuff all apart. All right, yeah, these are, this is all should be repairable. I just trim them up a little. Same length, same length enough. Let's see, the shortest one, I just want to make sure I don't have to lengthen anything. It's going to be tight, but it'll work. All right. Let me go and, uh, I'm going to go resolder all that. I'll be right back. Okay, we have things that are clean and resoldered and ready for reassembly. I fixed the, uh, wire with some nice shrink tubing. The sealed kind. It's 
open that strap up. I do wonder about why all that plastic was dremeled out. That was curious. I mean, it won't hurt anything, but it's still weird. All right. And it's going to go up over there, and this will all get strapped down. Let me get this and put this away. Save this for if I have problems in testing. If this thing cuts out at all while I'm testing it, I will just replace it with that other one that I know works. Let's see this. Okay, so I was going to reuse the original fuse, and I, you can see I put new legs on it. Turned out quite nice. But I can't really read this and see if it's really a 6.3. And the end caps are loose. See, I shouldn't be able to do that. So let's... Yeah, something's not right here. I don't know if that is really a piece of fuse wire or what. But anyway, it doesn't matter because we're going to use those. It's, uh, they're not the ceramic outsides, but it doesn't matter for this. I, I kind of prefer these because then I can actually see their status. So I'm going to go pop that in. And there's the fuse. So let me just stand these guys back up. We cleaned the old flux off. Now it's ready to go back in. And then we can uh, we can try it out. And let's put some screws back in. bracket that bracket's awesome that bracket probably prevents more damage than people realize ready to go back in. This wire goes over the top with the fan. And then I'll just tuck that down. Oh, left my meter on. Tuck that down. Nice. 
Alright, all that out of the way. It's all down. And then let's put one screw in. Actually, we're going to put the... Uh, let's see. Let me put this screw in. That'll bond it to that ground. And then put the, uh, the ground screw in. The uh, chassis ground. That's enough for testing. So let's plug this back in. Make sure that's seated like that. Uh, I need to clip that, that door switch. That's fine for testing, that'll work. I can get to the keyboard and everything else. So let me reposition you all. Okay, now that should be good enough for testing. All right, good. Yep, standby. Fires up, it must set for auto start. Yep, got a lamp. Lamp light, Optima. There it is. Now we got Optima. Get the zoom. Not a very big zoom. Lamp settings. Lamp hours were reset. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Lamp mode is dynamic. We'll leave that alone. Let's go to the test pattern. None. Grid. There we go. All right, I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes or so and make sure it doesn't cut out, and then I'm going to shut it down. We'll put the top on. You know, put the rest of these, let's the screws back in on the power supply and uh, go from there. So, be back in 10 minutes. Alright, and it's been about 25 minutes actually, and this looks good. So, let's turn that off. Let's get out of the menu. Let's turn it off. Oops, well, I didn't mean to do that, but well, that no, that won't turn the fan back on. That's okay. I'm going to let it cool down. We need to put the screws back in the uh, power supply anyway. There's a little fets in there. Like that one. This one. And then this one. I am a little confused about the uh, about that fan wire. I'm gonna have to ask him what happened. My guess is he just wasn't familiar with how all this comes apart. You know, how how could he? I will never, <coughs> pardon me, I should say I will rarely, if ever, criticize somebody for not doing this right. Just 
making an effort. You know, I, I to this day I still make mistakes. You all saw when I made I've made mistakes before. We're not perfect. I try to make less mistakes each time, but you know, we're human. So anybody who tries gets a thumbs up on my book. One fall out, not good. Alright, so now let's see that. Let me put the zoom in the middle because that has to line up with that thing. Let's plug Mr. Keyboard back in. And I'm actually gonna let this sit for a good oh I don't know, maybe even an hour. I want to let that lamp cool down fully before I uh, fire it up again. Because I did prematurely turn it off. All right, good, we're on the phone, we're on the zoom, it's good. Just snap all those clips back in. I mean, aside from that, it's in great shape. using my drill because the battery's dead. I thought I had another battery charged, but I did not have the charger plugged in, so it just sat there laughing, mocking me. That's that one. So now I have to uh, do it by hand. You know, it's fine. Okay, so my uh, last battery still has some life in it, so I'm taking one of my uh, adapters that I've printed to give me that kind of output. And then I'm just going to shove that in there, and then gator clip it. And I'm just going to leave that on top for a little bit and let that cool that lamp down really well and then I'll be back and we'll put this back on and then we'll test it over in the other area so I'll be back once this is cool alrighty that is cool that works for me oh, looks good make sure that's still snug yep Take our door with the latch that hits the little switch. Let's snug that up and then I'll meet you guys over at the other spot. All right. So we have a picture that nobody can see at the moment. Let's just get our source going. I'm using a uh, Raspberry Pi as a source because we need HDMI. There we are. Mm, didn't really reset everything. setting everything not current I want to because I want that picture to flip back over 
There we go. That's a pretty big picture. Let's see, menu. It all looks good. All right, I like it. That's all good. I'm happy here. All right, I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to blow that uh, dust out of the front. There we go. As you can see, we have uh, we have a functional Optima HD26. It had a pair of bad MOSFETs, and we replaced the fuse. I also fixed the uh, fan wires, and uh, it will have a little cleaning before it is put up for sale. So if you or anybody you know is looking for a decent, you know, really nice home theater projector, I used to run one of these myself with a new lamp. Uh, feel free to check in the description for an eBay link, and if it's not there, then it's sold, but hopefully the repair info is helpful to you. So again, if you have any questions, stick it down in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching.